Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Jack Lipton. How are you today, Jack? I'm very good, Tracy. Thank you. Jack, we have all kinds of commentators uh, sending me emails constantly about what Jack thinks. So we're delighted to have you here. And I'm going to start with your Chinese investment strategy for natural resources. I thought that piece was very insightful. Can you give us kind of an overview? What I think is that China has basically turned 180 degrees in the last three or four years. And now they are actively looking for natural resources outside of China to own, to buy, to, uh, to put into production, and to bring back the products to China. The, the thing that I think is overlooked by uh, North American investors is that the Chinese are not doing this to make money in the stock market. They're doing it to produce goods for the Chinese market, the natural resources and raw materials. And Every day I find out about more and more Chinese investor incursions into the natural resource market worldwide. And the thing that's really stopping, there's two things that are stopping them. One is political issues. In some countries just don't, don't want Chinese investment for, for political reasons. And the other is, uh, I'm going to invent a Woody Allen word, greeniosity. They, uh, they're not naive. They just don't, they don't know exactly where in the development of a natural resource they, they should go in. They, of course, would prefer producing companies. If they, if they could, I suspect they would buy Rio Tinto or Volley or somebody like that. But they, they, I think that my opinion is that many Chinese companies look upon our resource um, market in the West more holistically than they should. Like, like they, they seem to think that a, a junior miner struggling to bring something into production is about the same as somebody three or four steps down the road who's actually producing something. So I think they're, they're rapidly moving to clarify their, their, their outlook. And they're, they're beginning to understand. I know that they are not asking for a lot of help outside, notwithstanding events that occur from day to day, but they have to have it because uh, as, as they tell us, you know, they say, you don't, you don't know anything about our, our country because you don't speak our language and you don't read our newspapers. Well, I have to say it's the same for them. And so this is a, a whole new world. And, and when people ask me, what should I invest in, I say, well, I don't know, what has what the Chinese aluminum company been looking at lately? I, I'm watching uh, China's acquisition of natural resources, and that's, that's where I'm looking to make future investments. For example, one of the hottest things, I was in China last week, all they want to talk about is lithium. Isn't that interesting? All right, I have a number of questions here, obviously. Okay, so uh, I was speaking with Adrian Nixon, also from Investor Intel, who yeah. was saying that when you make decisions about doing business with the Chinese, you have to decide whether or not you're, you know, you have the same understanding of long term. The Chinese are uh, well known for having mm -hmm. long term vision. So going back to the long term vision, you know, we've spent a lot of time on Investor Intel talking about sustainability. What are the benefits for us in North America, for instance, in allowing the Chinese to uh, make so many acquisitions here in the resource sector? It, it helps sustain business, quite frankly. Uh, North America has far better uh, mining and refining technology and fabrication technology than the Chinese have, by a long shot. They're, they're learning from us. Ultimately, of course, they won't need us anymore because they will have learned. But this is the history of the world. We, le we learn from the British. Uh, uh, the British learn from somebody else. This is how it works. Uh, I think that at the moment, uh, the Chinese should be viewed as a definite benefit to North American resource development because they're coming in here to keep companies going and to, surprisingly enough to me, entering at a very low level, i.e. even at the junior level they're looking at companies. Companies that aren't yet producing but, but have a, uh, something in development. This is a big change, it's, uh, the so-called sea change for the Chinese because in the past they only wanted developed companies. And quite frankly, 
they, they have to leave the management and the workforce the same because these are the people that know how to do it. Now, you, if a Chinese, for example, uh, America now has a very large automotive glass company in Columbus, Ohio. It's a Chinese company and, and it employs 400 people from Columbus and one or two Chinese managers. Uh, Americans are simply resistant to the idea that, that they can be colonized. But the fact is, in, in resource development, if you're not going to do it for yourself, somebody else is going to do it for you. All right, so I'm going to step back and ask you the same question from a different angle. So, say a lithium exploration play, because mm -hmm. they're popping up everywhere, and you're saying the Chinese are interested in yeah. lithium, yeah. and they're interested in seed level exploration plays so. to make investments and acquisitions, and this is consistent with a lot of emails that we're receiving presently. Now, the disadvantage, however, is in looking long term, once they come in, and even though we have a more competitive technology, which you're discussing, uh, what happens, you know, 40, 50 years ago, 40, 50 years from now, when they not only have our technology, but then they own all of our assets? What happens? Well, uh, I would be 126 years old, so I'm not going to worry about it. But I, if I were you, I would worry about it. What ha this is the natural course of things. By the way, you're assuming that the, everything will go the, for, for the, in the Chinese, to the Chinese benefit for the next 40 years. If you can recall that we said this about the Japanese, about the Arabic nations, uh, probably India will be next. What's going to happen is that business will go on because markets are more important than resources. So where's the market? Right now, the market for natural resources is East Asia. Let's face it, 60% of the world's metal goes to that part of the world. That, that may or may not always be true because even the Chinese society will mature one day to the point where it doesn't need additional material, at which point we'll be complaining that the Chinese are trying to sell too many things here again. Okay. Right now, we buy cheap things from the Chinese. We don't buy computers uh, that they've designed, and we don't buy uh, aircraft, things like that. Uh, we buy cheap things. They're trying to get into higher tech things, more valuable things. We're very competitive in that, and we're way ahead of them. So don't just think about natural resources. World markets are getting much more uh, sophisticated as time goes on. I can't predict the future. If I could, uh, you know, I, I would make a living that way. Jack, thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, you're welcome.